Hey, my name's Adam and I am a professional audio engineer. I've been running this YouTube channel since the year 2011 and in this video, I want to show you how to set up Amazon Music HD so that it plays back at the highest quality settings. This is the home page for Amazon Music HD. Up here we have whatever they're featuring. Down here is your recent plays. But the setting that I care about the most, well, actually there's, there's two, but go up to your name right here and click it. And then you're going to go to preferences. Next, we'll go through the settings one by one. Manage subscriptions, that's the billing information. Block explicit songs, basically anything with swear words, it won't show up. And then we have where is the offline listening folder. Where are all those files going to go to? I put that on my secondary drive because I don't want that stuff junking up my solid state drive. And you change that by clicking the select folder button. If you're an iTunes user, they have options for exporting and all that good stuff. And finally, what language do you speak or read? But all the technical stuff is in the advanced tab right here. So just click the, the word advanced. And we have some options now. I'm actually gonna disable launch during startup. I do like the taskbar pinning and I usually keep these two off. But here's where the audio file type of stuff comes. What quality setting? Now it tells you, but I, I will say it's a little bit hard to read. I don't know why they put this stuff in like a dark font. But anyway, I will usually have this on HD Ultra HD because I have a 75 megabits per second internet connection and it's unmetered. So I don't care about it being a lower quality. I want the highest quality no matter what. Even if the app says your connection's going slow because I know it's not. <laughs> but if you do have metered internet, if you do have a slower connection, then I would say use the data saver option. And at that point, you really shouldn't have Amazon Music HD, just get the regular option. And if your internet connection is slow but unmetered, then go with standard. But if you are going for the best quality, which is what this tutorial is all about, absolutely HD slash Ultra HD. For the casual listener, I recommend keeping loudness normalization on. However, if you're going for the best quality that is not affected by Amazon software, turn it off. I personally normally have this off because I don't mind going in my audio software and making adjustments. I have all the sliders, all the faders, all the knobs right here at my disposal. And if I have to turn something up or down, I don't mind taking the extra five seconds to do that. But if you're playing your music like at a party or something, or you're just doing something in the background, if you don't really care for all that stuff, then keep loudness normalization on. Download settings. This is pretty much self-explanatory. If you, again, have a slow internet connection, maybe Amazon's not allowing you to listen to the best quality, I recommend downloading your music and your internet provider would prefer you do that too. And in that case, choose best available HD slash ultra HD. Pretty obvious, but if you're running out of hard drive space, or if you have a slow internet connection, and I, by slow, I don't mean like it takes like two minutes to download. I mean like if it takes an hour to download one song or something like that, then data saver, but otherwise definitely keep it on best available. I like the playlist setting. You know, you don't want duplicates. Duplicates are weird. So always ask before making them. Simultaneous downloads. Again, this has to do with your internet connection speed. I could crank this mofo up to like six and my Verizon Fios connection will laugh. I keep it at three though, just because, eh, do I really need to download six tracks at a time? Not really. I mean, I could just keep it on six. Let's just keep it on six. 
<laughs> Once again, it asks for your download location, and I have it on my secondary drive. And then we also have, what is this? Reload my music. I actually don't know what this means, so I'm going to read it with you guys. Okay, so this is probably where a database error issue is happening because, you know, things happen to files, and if one file gets corrupted, then it can be a snowball effect. So they give you this option, I guess, in case something goes wrong, and you don't know why something's going wrong. Amazon doesn't either, so they're going to tell you to reload your music database. <laughs> And then finally, our last two options. This is for graphics card usage, which most people on modern computers do have some type of graphics card. And keeping hardware acceleration on is probably what you want to use. But if for some reason you're having graphical issues where things aren't appearing properly or it's going really slow, then you might want to consider turning this off. I have it on because I have a graphics card built in. Like, it's not really a great one, but uh, it gets the job done, so. And it actually explains to you why you would want to choose this option. Finally, if you are having problems with the software, then they have this option for you. It has nothing to do with audio quality. It does have to do with app quality, though. So those are the app options, all right? Here's the more important ones, and I'm gonna show you on Windows 7 and Windows 10 how to do this. So under Windows 7, go down to the speaker icon, which is the Windows Mixer, and you want to right-click on it, and then left-click Playback Devices. And under here, we have a few different tabs for different things. Playback is the one we want. If it's not already selected, we're going to double click wherever it says default device. And for me, that's output one and two. It's going to be different on your computer, but it should be whatever has the green check mark next to it. So double click that. And then we're going to go over to our advanced tab. And we're going to choose right here where it says default format. You're going to click this. And then it will show you all your different bit rates and sample rates that your audio interface or your sound card is capable of doing. So the one that I can do, the maximum I can do, is 24-bit 96 kilohertz or 96,000 hertz. So I'm going to select that. I can either just hit OK or I like to hit Apply just because I got OCD. It's being used by another application. OK, so I can't show you that. But if I could hit OK or could hit Apply, it would change. But then I have another setting to do, which is under here. This is my sound card control panel. It's called ID, but it's my Audient sound card, which is an external USB device. Under here, I'm going to go to the Setup menu, Set Sample Rate. And I'm not going to do it because it will mess something up, but normally, once I change it to 96 kilohertz under Windows, I just change it under here if it doesn't do it automatically. And then, at that point, I now have a 96 kilohertz signal going from my USB to the Audient ID14 sound card and then out to my speakers. And that way, any of the audio on here that is capable of doing 96 kilohertz, I can do it. Or audio that can do lower sample rates as well. It can handle it. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it under Windows 10. And it's basically the same thing as Windows 7, but things look a little different. Now, if for some reason you cannot see your speaker icon right here, then you really should type in under here, under, under the Windows search, Turn system icons on or off, right? And then look for volume and make sure it's on. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. 
First of all, and I forgot to say this during the Windows 7 part, but if you left click on the speaker icon, make sure it's at 100%, all right? Because you wanna control all the volume related stuff with your sound card or your speakers. Which by the way, I do recommend having an external digital to analog converter. The one that I have because I'm a professional audio engineer is an Audion ID14, which yeah, you may not need to record a microphone, but I really can't recommend another converter that's under the amount that I paid other than an Audion ID4, which is $200 and that comes with less features but there's no standalone DAC that I can personally recommend other than the ones that I've already used. So if you get the ID14, you'll have a nice sound quality like I do. Anyway, there's a link in the video description if you wanna buy it. So, moving on, after you set your volume to 100%, right click the speaker icon and then go up to speaker setup and then advanced setup. And just like under Windows 7, you're going to double click whatever's checked in green. Okay? See how it says default device right there? Double click that. And then we're going to go to supported formats. And we're going to look at what do we have available? Okay, sample rates. On this computer, we only have 48 kilohertz. Okay? On yours, once you have a advanced level audio interface or a sound card installed, you should have other sample rates. So whatever it supports, it could be 48 kilohertz, it could be 96 kilohertz, or it could be 192. I had one that went up to 384. So you're gonna set it to the highest one under this tab, the advanced tab. And now right now, it's grayed out. I can't change that, probably because it doesn't support any other sample rate. So just pick the one. Normally, it, there's a drop down menu right here, just like under my Windows 7 setup. So pick that and then hit apply and then OK. And then again, follow the directions that I showed earlier for Windows 7 on how to use your audio interfaces drivers to get that maximum quality from Amazon Music HD. So if you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the video thumbs up button, leave me a comment, even if it's just to say thank you, and also share this video so that you can maximize your Amazon Music HD experience. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.